The Kissimmee, Florida tool meet. This is the NWTCA tool meet. Hi. How y'all doing? <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so we're going to have fun today actually walking around seeing all these tools. If you have questions, let me know and uh, we will have some fun here. This is uh, a, a tool meet that happens each year. This is the second annual one in Kissimmee, Florida. Uh, there are tool meets like this all around the U.S. and other places in the, uh, in the world as well. Uh, if you want to find something like this, go to handtoolfinder.com. On there I have a calendar of events for tool meets all over the place, uh, as well as a map where you can try and find ones like this near you. Uh, so this is the, the second year this, is one, this one's happening, so it's not a huge one, but it's still a lot of fun, and there's some, there some really cool tools here today. So if you guys see something on here you want me to go back and take a look at, let me know. But otherwise, we are going to turn around, and we are going to turn around. There we go. And we're going to start here and work our way along. So uh, we're going to go down these table, a couple over there, come back this side, go down that side, come back this side over here. Um, and especially back on that far side over there, there's some seriously cool tools. Uh, so let's actually come on down here and see what we got. So we're going to start off with uh, some axe heads, trammel points. Hi, what's your most expensive plane? My most expensive plane is a uh, Stanley 51 shooting board plane, uh, usually around 500, 600 bucks. I bought it um, and traded a few things for it because <laughs> I didn't have it to 500, 600 bucks for it. And here's a, I love these old um, skew rabbit planes, shoulder planes, just cool. Especially this one, it's got so much um, uh, mutton and other things in it, oils from the use. Heading to Tampa today. Yeah, we'll be here for a little while. We're uh, at the, uh, it's a Christian church in, uh, in Kissimmee, Florida. Actually, you'll be at, in Tampa in March. For vacation, not for tools. So sorry. <laughs> now here's a, uh, a four and a quarter. This one actually has um, the mouth broke a long time ago there, and on the other side here. And you can see the tiny little bit of pitting in there. They did an amazing job of fixing it, but it looks like it broke all the way through, and uh, they repaired it. Prices here are. Eh, actually, not too far off what I would expect in the in, in the, the Midwest. But if I skip over something, let me go back and take a look at. It, let me know. Let's see what we got here. That's interesting. Someone put a cut through that medallion to try and make it easier to take off. Huh? That's kind of cool. It's fun to watch the the history and some of these. That's fun, like a monkey's paw, but bent back over to create a hammer. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's uh, quite a few files here. Some more trammel points, block lanes. There's a couple people that have uh, a pile of block lanes. What are these? That's a, it's, it's a shear but then captures the pieces. But it looks like it's molten inside, like they've been shearing off bits of metal. Huh. Love to find out what that is. One of the things I love about coming here is you pick up something like that, and you're like, what is this? And the guy behind the table will be able to tell you. Or he'll be like, I have no idea either. Do you know? <laughs> Which one's this? The uh, number nine, 192. 192 did not have... Uh, the fence, so it doesn't have the screw here for the, the fence on the other side. Some door hinge gauges, fiberboard cutters, nice set of little chisels. Ooh. Oh, Stanley Odd Job. Did a, uh, a video on that. I have the Garrett Wade version of it. I love these boxes where you, they're kind of like dig and dug. You never know what you're going to find in them. There's a lot of people who collect um, tape measures, particularly uh, advertising marked tape measures. So see those quite a bit. Folding rules and more folding rules. Dude, that, that box totally rules. That's awesome. Uh, sorry, I had to. It's in my contract. Hammers, thump and whackers. There's a nice little plain setting hammer. That's cute. These are uh, salesman samples, anvils, because the salesman didn't want to carry around all the anvils. 
and we got uh, oh these are kind of fun um, this actually every time it rotates uh, it's a, the dial goes well it doesn't go all the way around but it'll tell you how many times this is rotated so you can put this on your uh, your lathe or the, the tool you're working on and see how many times it goes around in a certain amount of time. So you watch your stopwatch and you see this and you know what the RPM on your tool is. Some saws. More hammers. Let's see, what do we got in here? Well, I like these ones with the, the brass faces. Uh, oh, that one even has a, a uh, that wood? Oh yeah, a little wood inflate, insert that they can unscrew. How much are spoke shaves? Bloody Florida, Florida? Sorry. Let me come back here to the spoke shaves. Spoke shaves, spoke shaves, spoke shaves, spoke shaves. Oh, here they are. Let's see, what's he's asking? Uh, 25, 35, 30, 58, um, 90 for that one. Some of these are collector's pieces. Oh, this one's kind of fun. It's got going both directions. What's he asking on that one? 75 on that one. Up here for the uh, what's that? 50. 400? Why is he asking 400 on that? I do not know why he's asking 400 on that. that I'll come back and ask him that. But, uh, <laughs> Let's see, where were we at? Ah, back over here. Do, 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 do. Old stock handles. There's another fiberboard cutter. I actually just got one of those recently. And here's a uh, Stanley 45. Well, that's kind of cool with the box and all. Set of cutters. What's he asking on that? Doesn't have prices on it. Here's some fun knives. The scissors are for trimming candle wicks. Oh, yeah, yeah, because the flame would be above. That, that'd be right. Now, here's some cast iron pots. Looks like some good seasoning. Union number two. Corrugated. That's pretty. Fun little Miller's Falls. No prices on these ones, so you'd have to ask. Hammers. Levels. All right, here's a transitional. Nice long transitional. I actually saw someone recently who took the body out of the transitional and put it on a four foot long board. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Trying to turn it into a Cooper's plane or something. Some keyhole saws. Rules. Here's a, uh, a miter box saw. You know it's a miter box saw because it's long and has a back and it's parallel, the back to the teeth. A cool old spoke shave. Doesn't have a price on it. Yeah, here's a five and a quarter. That make a. This one is a, um, a newer one with the uh, the plastic, but honestly, other than that, it makes a great user. And you can get a different um, adjuster on there and make it really nice. Uh, but this one still has the wooden knob and tote. I think a, a great user. Bailey 6. Yep, 6. Really thick walls on that beast. Yeah, he doesn't have any prices on these, so I don't, don't know what he's asking on them. Prices I found are actually pretty close to what I would expect to find in the Midwest. Check out this tall hacksaw here. <laughs> And uh, anyone looking for a block plane? Lots and lots of block planes. Some meets I'll go to, they'll even just be giving these away because people have so many of them. Brace yourself for this, folks. It's going to get boring. <laughs> Talking about boring, here's an apple core peeler slicer. Some uh, come alongs. Oh, that's cool. So, this you can cast your lead in, but it has holes in the bottom so that the dross doesn't go through just the lead. For casting bullets and such. Wrenches and files. If there's something you want me to go back to and uh, take a look at closer, let me know. 
I'm surprised. There's actually a decent amount of sellers here. There just aren't that many people walking around. But, oop, come on, come on, back, 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 back. There we go. And they actually have, uh, what is that crazy person over there? <laughs> yeah, let's come over here. They have a table over here that uh, people, if they only have one or two things to sell, can come over. They have a couple um, pieces here. This one is cool. This, uh, um, oop, those are my feet. This one has a uh, blacksmith um, breast drill. There's the word. Cool piece in there. Some pieces for 113. Let's see, we got a number one over here coming up. A couple compass planes. Another number seven. Number four in the box. Ooh, pretty. <laughs> Heads and hammers. There's some more hammer heads. We got. Let's come around this way. Why is the nose missing on that one? Huh? Yeah, that's how we. That's how we would make. It's like a. Dates to about 1850. A chisel plane where they still want the sidewall. Would be like a, rab a router, like a hinge mortiser? No, no. I think it's just like a you know, rabbit, or no, not a rabbit. Um, it, so you could you could actually see where how far you were planing, maybe yeah. up to a. Yeah. But it was nifty. I I bought it and I thought it was somebody cut it and made you know made it into that. But yeah. it was the made on the inside. I got two of them. Huh? Yeah. So this this would be all. There's some irons. I, I don't know, really, but it's not been used much. Oh, you're heading to the shore right now? Nice. It'll be good to see you in a few minutes. Come here and say hi when you come up. Oh, no. Yeah, laminate. Yeah. Let's see, what do we got over here? Number five, but I don't know who made that one. We got some corner chisels here. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking to the video. We got uh, plow planes. Pretty old plow planes. Oh, 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 can't miss this right here. What's this back here? What's this? That may look bigger in here, but it's actually, it's a number one. <laughs> There's usually one of those at most meets. Someday I'll get a number one. Haven't yet. Some nice squares in there. I always like digging through the squares. I'm always looking for, I'm looking for this one, but with a three inch blade. I've got the four inch blade. I want the three inch blade. And another 45. Oh, this one's fun. This is cool. This is a, a mother plane. So what happens is the sole on this is replaceable, and it's got a, a curve in it and a matching iron to that curve. And so all of these are different curvatures that you can put onto it, and each one comes with a matching iron. Um, and so what you do with these is you make your hollow, and then you use your hollow to make your round. So these are the mother planes that make the tools. Oops. Here you got some hollow augers or uh, tenon cutters, tenon nerves. Lufkin tools. Love going through these old catalogs and seeing what's in there. Oh, check out that beauty. 60 bucks on this. What is it? It's been resold. Look at that body on there. More braces, these cutters, scratch stock cutters. Oh, check out those little things. Union Tool Company, those are tiny, those are really cute. Some uh, tap and dies, some more random tools. I love these small machinist squares. I love, one of those, it's just, it's just so nice to have for, for checking square in the edge of a board and working around it. Stanley Toolbox of the World. Stanley Toolbox of the World. Got it. Uh, chisels. What is this? I do not know what that is. Huh. That's one of those things I want to come back and say, what, 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 what is that? I don't know. Now you'll see some of these old grooving planes. These are uh, a carriage maker's grooving plane. They never get to focus. It's got two teeth, and they cut in either direction. And so because of that, you can cut this way, and then you can turn around and cut this way, and you can do rounded grooves. Uh, carriage makers used to use those quite a bit. Here's another one. 
tapes, some more dies, hammers, chisels, veiners, uh, scratch duck. Oh no, leather cutter. Here's a uh, wooden tap and die. Draw knives. Draw tooths. Plow planes. Uh, here's a, uh, this is a core box plane. And so this actually makes um, hollows. It makes rounded surfaces, uh, concave surfaces in the wood. So you rough it out, and then you come in with this, and because it rides on the two sides, you get an exact curvature from one side to the other. Cabinet scraper from Coons. Now here's a, uh, this is a, a, a tonguing plane um, for a carriage maker. Block plane. Here's a, yeah, this is one of my favorite styles, the, the 113, where it's got the standard depth adjuster. That is my favorite of all of them. What's he asking on it? 125. 30 bucks, 20 bucks, 35. There's a Stanley five and a quarter for 60. 40, 40, 80, 75. And those are all in sharpen it and go. Good condition. Oh, these are kind of fun over here. This. Come on, turn, 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 turn. There we go. Pattern Makers Sand Casting Tools. So these are tools uh, for shaping the casting. Can you guys still comment? I want to make sure that that's actually working. Uh, otherwise, I have to fix it. Uh, but these are uh, for working on the, the sand casting tools, uh, for creating sand casting. So you have all these weird profiles for getting into things. And then he's got this whole box of them back here. Hey, there it's working. Okay, good. For some reason, I've had a couple lives where the chat has suddenly stopped working. And I have to go in and reset things. Hey, look, it brought my shoes. <laughs> these are clog making tools. Sip out. Um, I've got a set of these long knives here. I would love to get a, a long spoon bit like this. Um, and I'd love to get one of these someday. Uh, so this makes it a lot easier to get in there. But yeah, it's just using a hook knife to clean out deeper in there and make it sh so this would be this would be what they would come if you got a blank it would be a rough shape like this and then the inside would be roughed generally to a foot shape and then you come in and do more detailing and really smooth it out and clean it to match your foot exactly and uh, that's why they're comfortable chair makers tools chair makers use a lot of spoke shapes tin and cutter or hollow auger yeah, one of these days I want to make a uh, I want to make a clog from start to finish, but uh, haven't quite gotten there. Okay, let's see what we got down with these ones. Drill press, some machinist tools. Oh, he's got a square here I want to show. That's really interesting. How much did that thing cost? Here. I haven't seen one like this before. I'm sure you didn't. And so this actually, it's a square, and you can loosen up, let me do this, uh, you can loosen this up here, let's see if I can do it one-handed, and then this can adjust, so it's, it's a bevel gauge, but also a square, and that is seriously cool, I've never seen one quite like that before, that's fascinating, kind of hard to do one-handed, but yeah. Okay, here are some candle forms. Some more planes. 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks. $200, yeah, these are uh, collectible. Stanley 95. $10. 80, 60. There's a uh, uh, cabinet scraper. Uh, let's see, pliers, corner vise, another folding rule. What are these? Oh, they're the ratchet head, the ratcheting the wrench heads. So you can slide this onto the bolt, uh, put your ratchet in here, and it will rotate. And so you can actually rotate this around to lock it in place. Some saw sets. 
big ones, little ones, some in between. 30 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, 50 bucks, 30 dollars. Yeah, the uh, those are a little on the higher price, but not bad. Here we've got a door marking gauge, hinge marking gauge, corner chisel. Let's see, that's going down. 20 bucks. Marking gauge, rollers, sextant, marking gauges. Hey. That saw has seen better days. <laughs> well, that's a fun tooth pattern. I wonder what brought about that. Usually when you see teeth like that, I think I saw. Oh, this green thing here. This is a, a, this is a railroad uh, level or gauge. Um, and so you actually have a gauge that sits there to the other side here. So you can see exactly how far apart the rails are on the, uh, the railroad. But then this also goes up and down because at different places they have to pitch the angle of the railroad so that it goes around um, at a certain speed. It feels like you're still rolling flat. Don't come across these very often, but uh, they're kind of cool. Some more levels. Minor box saws. Horse gear. Let's see, spring scale. There's an old beat up ads. <laughs> Someone pulled that out of a bog. That's cool. Trying to get a good picture on it. It's not going to let me focus, is it? There we go. Got the focus. <laughs> oh, there we go. A beastly vice with the dog. Tongs, ice tongs. Railroad tongs. Oil cans. What's that? Railroad tongs. Railroad tongs. Yeah, I think ice tongs wouldn't be that beefy. Huh. Oh, for like grabbing the ties. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes more sense. It's one of the things I love about coming to these. You learn all sorts of things. Oil cans. A lot of people like collecting oil cans. There's some saws. Look at the handle on that thing. Wow. Someone wanted that handle. $2, $3, $5, $5, $2, dollars $2. One's got really nice big ripping teeth. And we got another nib. Saw with a nib. There's another four in a box. You ask him on that. Doesn't have a price on it right now. Some more cool planes. Collect little ones. My wife would like those. Fours and threes. So you ask him on these threes. 85. Uh, 60. 50. Not bad for number threes. Really nice clean ones too. Those ones are ready to sharpen and go. Here's a, uh, a 110 block plane in the box. <laughs> the Stanley Tools Antique Collectible Guide. A little out of date, but hey. <laughs> Stanley 78 in the box. No, oh, it's nice and clean. Duplex rabbit plane. Let's see, what do we got in here? Viders, folding rule. Oh, hate these things. <laughs> so, yes, that's an old drill bit. Um, it's called a, uh, uh, not, oh, come on. Gimlet, there's the word. Nice little saw set. What's he asking on that one? Ten bucks. Hand screw clamps. Here's a Liberty Bell. You don't see the wood, the metal wood uh, Liberty Bells quite as often as you do the uh, the wooden transitionals. Eighty-five bucks. Some sp uh, the spoke shaves. What are they asking on those? Twenty-five, twenty, sixty, twenty, twenty-five. Hammers. This is a beautiful plow plane. Look at this sucker. Nice. 
clean, fine threads on that. Yeah, come on by. We'll be here for, I think they said they start wrapping up around 11. So you got another hour and a half. And actually, they have lunch here as well. Um, so that will be, uh, it'll be, they'll be going for a while still. So come on out. Here we got some molding planes. That's a cute little thing. Look at that. Come on, focus. There you go. Tiny little thin iron on there. Those are pretty. Ah, yeah, these. I've seen a few of these. And they probably have something to do with carriage maker. What does he call it? Coach making. Fruitwood. Boxwood sole. So this is fruit wood up here, and then a boxwood. Boxwood is an incredibly durable wood, but it doesn't grow very big, so you get little pieces out of it. It's a nice big joiner. A lot more molding planes. And look at this little thing here. That's kind of fun. <laughs> a couple beading planes. You see this, these lines in here? That's actually boxwood in there. It makes it uh, a more durable running surface. And so you see a lot of those, and that's actually called boxing. It's boxwood. <laughs> Folding rules. Nice little squares. Some more plow planes. Braces. Okay, oh, I'm going to come over here and show you guys some of these displays. And, uh, oh, look, someone's doing a uh, mortise and tenon joint. So what do we got here? This is Crescent Tool Manufacturing Company. I'm going to have to come back and read through it because he's got two tables on here. I'm trying to figure out what ties all these back together. Ever Ready Tool Tin. Stanley Cobbler's Pliers. I'm interested to see what those are. So we got over here. This is more from the, the same person. And I want to come back through here because I think most of these are just individual tools that he's showing off. Um, normally each table has a, has a theme, but this is kind of interesting. Stanley 45 drill display. Oh, so the Yankee drills actually have displays. You can see them all. This one over here is really cool. Uh, these are wooden braces by Jim Fox. <laughs> You can see a satisfied customer. <laughs> Look at the, the burling on this one. That's really cool. So wooden braces. And you'll notice most of these, this is actually part of the bit. And so you would make your brace with a particular square shape in here. And you would buy the spoon bit or whatever type of bit you would have. And then you would make this adapter that would lock onto the forged version. And with the, the square that would fit onto that. Let's see. Oh, brasses. Oh, I've got, I've got one of these for parts, and it's broken, and I want to actually make the the wooden part for it. The Sheffield brace. Really beautiful. Some cool displays here. I love coming through these and learning some things. Okay, right, let's come around over here. Good turn. That way. There we go. Look at that. Oh, here we got some. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We got a toolbox here. Uh-huh. This wasn't here when I came through earlier, so I'm going to have some fun here. This is what I I don't want to make one quite this big. But uh Yeah, check out this with the chisel storage, saw storage, tills, plane storage, braces and levels. It shows a bunch More of tills in here. More to, okay, I'm gonna at the end of the video. I'm gonna come back here and take a look at this because this, this is kind of cool. Um, yeah, we're gonna take a look through this chest here a little more. Here is a uh, Stanley dowel maker. Uh, normally, what they end up doing is they take this gear off and they put the pulley on here, and they have the pulley go around that way. But on this one, 
they mounted the pulley on they mounted the, the pulley onto that put the motor down here and it's got a five cutter set so that's actually kind of cool and here's a uh, turtle back um, pattern maker's vice sorry what was that Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay, here's another tool chest. So this is about the size I'm thinking about making. Um, this one, a lot of the older ones have the, the saw storage in the lid. So I've got a couple that I'm going to be looking at here soon and choosing one. What is this? Is that a marking gauge? Oh, yeah, it's a marking gauge. So the cutter is out here with the handle. And it's got all these pins so you can slide the fence in and out. Put the fence where you want and make your mark. So it's got uh, quarter inch increments. Quarter, half, yeah, quarter, half, three quarter, one. And it's got two holes on the one inch on every one of them. Wonder why that is. So, thick, uh, hand planer, <laughs> power planer, there's the word. Here's some. Uh, um, Chis uh, carving chisel handles. Someone made a bunch of blanks. Block lanes. Nail puller. Yeah, I'll come back to that chest here in a minute. Then we get down to the end of this table and then I'll come back and get a closer look at it. There's a bunch of people standing around right now. Here's some really nice saws. Pretty. 75, 55, 45, 15. This one's got little nibs. Some holdfasts. Forged holdfasts. The buck saw. Five dollars or less. It's a marking gauge, cool brace, plumb bobs, marking gauges, dividers, ten snips. Five bucks or less. There's a uh, chain brace. Oh, here's a. Uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? No, it's not a miter. Oh, it's a book binding uh, press. Cool. Oh, this one's kind of fun. This is a it's basically a shooting board plane, but it's got a really small iron. And we were looking at it, trying to figure out what it is. And it's actually a typesetter's plane. Uh, and I want more information on that because it's it's really interesting. Because this thing is it's it's all metal. The tote is metal. The body is metal. It's it's massively heavy. Um, but a typesetter's plane. Interested to find out more on that. Here's a couple more plow planes. That one's got a beautiful depth stop on it here. Yeah, nibs are an interesting thing that I, I've loved studying. And every time I see a different or odd shape, I mean, because most of them from the 1800s until Civil War, until uh, the First World War, had a nib like that, which is a relatively common style. You find some with the, the fatter nib and some with the smaller nib, but they're usually in this notch out that's lower down. Um, though you will see some on a straight plate, uh, but then there are a lot of other designs from the early 1800s where they get three, four, five nibs or different designs on them. And I always love looking at those and uh, I'm collecting odd nibs. Here's a cool, couple cool little, uh, canes. There's a belt drive display. Some fun blocks. Knob and tote blanks. Some uh, replacement irons. Files. More files. Is this meet up today only? Yes, today only. We're in Kissimmee, Florida. It happens once a year. Uh, so this is the second annual, but yes, um, it is just today, probably only for another couple hours. Otherwise, there is one up in, um, um, oh, come on, just outside of Atlanta, Madison, Georgia. Uh, that's in February. That one's a multi-day event, um, and outside is tailgating the first day, and then they have uh, inside on the second day. 
I'm trying to make it to that one this year. We'll see. Oh, this is kind of cool. Took the uh, ball peen hammerhead and made a cane out of it. Craftsman anniversary tools. This one's fun. This is a, a lawnmower. So this would roll on the ground and run these teeth, and then that would rotate all of these heads to shear the grass off. So kind of an interesting lawnmower. The Montemower. And so depth of cut would determine on at what angle you put the head. Uh, here's everyone's favorite, an electric hammer. I had one of those once. It's a great uh, for uh, um, new people in the shop. <laughs> There's some more. Here again, I got one of those, but I'm still looking for the, the three inch version. I've got the four inch. And I've got most of the larger ones, but the three inch one, someday I'm going to find one. It's a hologram. Yeah, this is. Um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Honing gauge, a honing guide. So you can put your plane iron in here and then let that roll on the surface. Here's another Stanley 50. Plane parts of all types. Let's see, oh, here's a cool who made it and what for. So it's got these holes that are tapped on the side here, so it's assume like a fence or something of that nature. But really interesting frog and bolt design, as well as the looped handle. A lot of times you find these things that someone may have made that as a prototype or something, and who knows? Oh yeah, he also makes these kind of cool canes. <laughs> With the bent head, screwdriver handle, and <laughs> rules and measures, foot measures gauges, whatever those are called. Books. I always like looking through the books because every time you find something interesting. Here, let's go back and take a look at that chest over here. Go on, turn, turn. There we go. So if anyone has any questions, throw them up in the chat right now um, and I'll, I'll get to those here at the end. Uh, but I want to go back and take, because no one's at this chest right now, I want to take a closer look at it and see what's inside. This thing's really, really pretty. I might actually do a um, a, a real or a short video on it. So, here, turn this around. 